Son and to the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Jesus Christ, our Lord, on this blessed Sunday, make us worthy to praise your resurrection with pure hearts and with clear consciences. With all the children of your holy church, we glorify and thank you, your Father and your Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and your children. Let us raise glory, honor, and praise to the good and merciful Lord who in his compassion came down to us and became flesh. He chose to taste death for us to save us and he descended to the realm of the dead. By his resurrection he gave joy to his disciples and gave light to the nations with the light of his salvation. To the good one be glory and honor on this blessed Sunday and all the days of our lives and forever. Amen. O Word of God, who can adequately praise you for the depth of your compassion and what voice can bless you for you are above all praise. Neither mind nor tongue can describe the wonders you accomplished on Sunday, the day of your resurrection from the dead. And so with the psalmist David we cry out, This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Now, Christ our God, we ask you with the fragrance of this incense, which we offer you to forgive our sins, give peace of mind to those in distress, and bring comfort to those who are anxious. Bring back those who are far, and watch over those who are near. Guide the shepherd and sanctify the priest and purify the deacons. Pardon all sinners and guard the righteous. Protect orphans and help widows. Drive away all conflicts and put an end to all dissension. Remember the faithful departed and grant them rest in your heavenly kingdom that with them we may celebrate that eternal feast. We raise glory to you, to your blessed Father, and to your living Holy Spirit forever.
O Lord, accept the sweet fragrance of our incense and make us worthy to announce your resurrection along with the angels to proclaim it with your women disciples and to rejoice in its victory with your pure apostles. We raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. with joy from the mountain Sunday is a fee so great offer praise to the Lord God and with angels celebrate First letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and the children forever. Brothers and sisters, among human beings, who knows what pertains to a person except the spirit of the person that is within? Similarly, no one knows what pertains to God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the things freely given us by God. And we speak about them, not with words taught by human wisdom, but with words taught by the Spirit, describing spiritual realities in spiritual terms. Now the natural person does not accept what pertains to the Spirit of God, for to him it is foolishness, and he cannot understand it, because it is judged spiritually. The spiritual person, however, <coughs> can judge everything, but is not subject to judgment by anyone. For who has known the mind of the Lord as to counsel him? But we have the mind of Christ, Praise be to God always.
With the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, and at that very moment, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit, and he said, I give you praise, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and from the learned, you have revealed it to the little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. And turning to the disciples in private, he said, Blessed are the eyes that see what you see. For I tell you, Many prophets and many kings desired to see what you see and did not, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. This is the truth, peace be with you. of Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. In our Lord's teaching, and especially when we see the Last Supper, our Lord often speaks about the world and not being able. He speaks of the prince of this world, speaking of the world, and this contrast between himself and what he calls the world. Now, obviously, the world in this sense is not creation. Creation is his, it's what he's made. The world is what men make and what they do with their freedom in their minds. And what our Lord does at the Last Supper, of course, famously, he says, I do not pray for the world. That contrast will always be there. Contrast will say even conflict. This is what St. Paul is laying out at the beginning of the first letter to the Corinthians is he wants the Corinthians to understand. Because remember, this letter is going to be about problems in that parish at Corinth. But he wants to lay out to them a larger vision. Because it's easy for us on the world's level to poke each other in the eye. This is what we see. This is the culture now that we lived in, in its degradation over the last 40 years. It's just degenerated into the world. And the world is all about me. The world is all about I. The world is all about my offenses. The world is all about my feelings. And that is why when St. Paul says that the wisdom that is given is considered foolishness to the fleshly man, to the worldly man. He doesn't understand it. And St. Paul says in this letter today, he cannot understand it. Because his focus is not upon anything higher than 
himself and his feelings and his own sensibilities. That is the world. And that's why at the Last Supper our Lord says, I do not pray for the world, but I pray for those that you have given me from out of the world, that you protect them. Well, clearly the apostles that are with our Lord those hours before his death, they live in this world, in the creation. So when our Lord is making all of this contrast all the time, St. John's going to pick this up. St. Jo Paul will talk about the spiritual wisdom. He will talk about the man who is in the flesh and the man who is spiritual. And St. John in his letters is just going to talk about Christ and Antichrist. And the world in our Lord's teaching, that is Antichrist. It is in opposition to Christ. So this wisdom that St. Paul is talking about today is precisely this idea of how do we arrive then at what he calls the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ, when we think about the incarnation, that the hidden father sends his son into the world so that when Christ enters into the world, the word incarnate, this is obviously Christ himself. And what does he reveal? He reveals to us Abba. He reveals to us the hidden father and revealing to us what we often call the divine economy or the plan of salvation. What is God's thinking about these things? Remember we've considered in the Old Testament with the prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah and those, and you have the prophets tell the people of Israel that because you weren't struck down doing what you did, you thought what you were doing was fine. And he says, but my thoughts are not your thoughts and your thoughts are not my thoughts. And as heaven and earth are distant from one another, my thoughts are distant from yours. So when the Son enters into the world, it's to reveal precisely what is that thought of God. The Word incarnate reveals this aspect and this reality. It's why also at the Last Supper our Lord says, I give you my peace, not as the world gives. The world can make you content for a moment, Good 401k, nice sail at Coles, a good margarita on the deck at camp. You can be entertained and you can be content for a moment, but it cannot bring you peace. It cannot bring you a resolution of an order to your life until it is conformed to that order, which is God's plan anyway. So you see the frustration of what is called the world is they spend the whole time kicking against the actual program of God, if you like. And in doing so, not only are they not happy in this anti-Christic mentality, they make themselves absolutely miserable because they are fighting against the very reality which would bring them peace. And so our Lord then, in that same Last Supper, he says, and I will send you another advocate. And so if you've noticed throughout these weeks, we have all these readings about the Spirit and the revelation of wisdom and the coming of the Spirit of truth. And He will send to you and He will lead you into all truth. And all of these different phrases, because it is meant to bring about, not only in the body of Christ, but also in the individual, a transformation that again we call the mind of Christ. Now this word mind is interesting because it comes from Latin. We have it in the word, in the adjective mental. The Latin word is mens, M-E-N-S. So as an adjective belonging to the mens, it's mental, mentale. But mens, the word that the Romans have used, is actually also related to word measure. They all have the same origin. They all related to one another linguistically because it's the way that the Romans described in Latin, they were describing how the individual human person measures, measures and sees what is around them. And so they called it mens, which in Latin actually is an active present participle, meaning the action of measuring. So what St. Paul is saying by having the mind of Christ, it means you have been transformed from the inside out in order to be able to judge according to this vision of God, to be able to see what is the plan of God. So when the Spirit enters into the world, our Lord says that it does a number of things, that it will convince the world of sin, that the world has already been judged, 
and that the prince of this world has been cast out. So I, when you see a world that we live in now with so many movies, so many YouTube videos, so many films, so many television shows, are obsessed about angels and the demonic, this is twisted. The prince of this world has been cast out. St. Augustine famously says that the devil is a chained dog. So to live in a life where we become anxious over all of these things is absurd. It's certainly not Christian. And so this mind of Christ and the coming of the Spirit is meant to transform us on strength and on teaching and as our Lord says, as advocate. When our Lord says that I will send you another paraclete, the parakletos, another advocate, in the Greek notion, it's a very juridical sense, just the way it sounds, an advocate. There'll be a process of judging, of measuring, and condemnation. But in the Jewish understanding of an advocate, it has a slightly different sense of more of intercessory. That the spirit of truth that comes will be there to intercede for you, to make you, to transform you. Now, in our readings, we have in Safro, in the morning offices in the Maronite Church, we're reading the first epistle of St. John that precisely gives this idea of the clash with the world. And this is why when so many Catholics in the last 60 years have tried to just sprinkle holy water on the world and say it's not that bad, this is not the mind of Christ. From the very beginning, it's John, St. John saying, this is Antichrist. What is Antichrist? He says, Antichrist is the one who denies that Jesus is the Messiah. Boom. That is your definition of Antichrist. So everything in existence that does not recognize Christ as the Messiah, as the revelation of the mind of God, as the word incarnate, is Antichrist with all of the woo-woo-woo, a spookiness of Antichrist, of all the theater that we have, of Antichrist of opposition. St. John just makes it a blunt statement. Everything, he says, those who dissolve Christ. In other words, he's a nice man. He ain't God, but he's a nice man. He says, anyone who dissolves Christ is Antichrist. It is so blunt. It's one of, this is the time this week I'll tell you, I recommend you, rec you read the first letter of St. John. And St. John, in his gospel and in his epistles, are foundational to the Maronite church. It is the vision that we have of the world. All you have to do have been present to read the Fenquito in the Mass for Confessors and the Martyrs, referring to this world of darkness. The anaphora of St. John Maron talks about the gospel coming into a world of darkness and scattering the chaos and the darkness of this world without the gospel. That is the vision of Christ and Antichrist. So that when the Spirit is sent to us in Pentecost, it is meant both for the body of Christ and for the individual to be strengthened in this vision to understand this opposition. There is sin and there is grace. From the dawn of creation, from the garden, it has always been a question of grace, of gift from God, and sin, of personal, selfish, self-centered choosing. Whether it's Satan himself, or Adam and Eve, or the rest of us to varying degrees in our lives. Everything in existence is about sin, or it's about grace. There is no third possibility where she doesn't know better. She doesn't know better, but she's making choices. And the choices mean grace or sin. That's why St. John in his letter, he doesn't say that there's a third possibility of good pagans. That has never been the mind of the church because it's absolutely true, it's just false. Every single human being in existence from the dawn of creation has been or is now either in the state of sin or the state of grace. There is no other option. So when the spirit of truth comes and he says, and he will lead you into all truth, this is the strengthening of the mind of Christ both within the church and within the individual. To understand this opposition between what is Christ and what is anti-Christ. 
So that when our Lord speaks of the Spirit coming to us also as a teacher, this is for us to illumine the opposition, to understand where is that demarcation? What is that line that divides between what is of the Messiah and what is opposition to the Messiah? That is the teaching of the Spirit in our individual lives. This is how we arrive at the mens Christi, at the mind of Christ, to be able to see more clearly and to be able to judge. It doesn't mean to say that these people are wicked and evil, but it is to say that what they do is in diametric opposition to Christ. It is a vision to see in the teaching. And then lastly, when our Lord speaks about the Spirit as being advocate, that idea of either judgment, of seeing things and measuring things, or of opposition, it is a corrective. So that when he says of the intercessory aspect of the Spirit being given to us, our Lord is saying is that the parakletos, the paraclete, is given to us to intercede and to help us transform, to correct ourselves in this vision of Christ and the opposition of the world. This is all, from week to week, this is going to become clearer and clearer and clearer to you, obviously. What has happened to us in a human, as a human society in the last 10 years is absolutely extraordinary. I tried to explain to the 20-somethings around us what the world used to look like, and even then it was pretty bad, but at least it had some kind of foundational understanding because it had been built on a Christian vision of the gospel. That is all gone, completely gone now. And all you get is the opposition. This is the rage, this is the despair, this is the anguish of the world, this is the addictions, this is the suicides that we've talked about. We scream about guns, but the vast majority of gun deaths in the United States of America are suicides. They're not killing other people. 69% of deaths by gun are suicides. And in Maine, in our broken state, of dissolved families, of broken issues, of broken human relationships, that despair and that opioid and those addictions are even more profound. That is the opposition. Remember, diabolic means to mar creation. The diabolic desires to efface the dignity within human beings, to make them broken shells of human beings who are find their addictions in their porn and in their alcohol, and of course we just legalize marijuana. We're doing all of these things so backward, but it is marring of the individuals, and in that advocacy to understand and to illumine this understanding of opposition, again, is to bring compassion to these broken family relations, or fam to create families, that's why, not by accident, that in Maine, you had it in the newspaper article a week and a half ago, that 89% of deaths by gun in Maine are suicides, 20% higher than the national average. In other words, almost every gun death in Maine is a suicide. This is horrific, but it is the world. This is the opposition to the plan of God. It, de it effaces and it eviscerates human beings. It makes them shells. And that when grace comes to them, they don't understand any of it. Remember what St. Paul says in the epistle today, that when the wisdom of God comes to them, to the fleshly man, to the worldly man, it's foolishness, it's stupid. And he says, not only to him is it foolish, but he cannot understand it. This mending that has to take place, this healing that has to take place. Oh, and in that 89% of gun deaths in Maine that are suicides, 90% of those are young men and men and boys. 90%. Why are all the males in, in Maine offing themselves? Why are these numbers so huge? And again, it's not a huge number numerically, but we're not a huge number numerically as a state. These are all indications of what our Lord meant by the world. And the world needs to be healed. And so when we speak about the spirit, the God comes to us as paraclete. It's a correctiveness to ours, to mine, and to each of us individually. It's a correctiveness 
to our selfishness and to our disordered way of viewing the world. Because if we don't actually stand back and say what is actually objectively broken here and spend our time just simply patching up and bandaging symptoms and effects, it will always continue to rot. It's a very simple logic. Same causes, same effects. So that intercessory aspect of parakletos that our Lord speaks about, that Jewish understanding that an advocate is actually an intercessor, it's related to the notion in the Old Testament of geola. That this intercessory aspect is he's interceding to bring us that truth in order to bring that corrective in our individual lives to the selfishness and to the, this, this, this misjudgment, this disordered judgment. Because remember, the spirit is not given to the world. The spirit is given to those who believe. It is given to the body of Christ. That's why our Lord said we saw that last week. Why our Lord says at the Last Supper, in a little while you will not see me, and again in a little while you will see me. But the world will not see me. And St. Jude asked that question last week. How is it that we will see you and the world will not see you? This is what it means in this question of wisdom. So last week and this week linked together. Last week's gospel, this week, this whole aspect of advocacy, of what it means to be intercessory, and what it means to have the wisdom of Christ. It's not mine. It's not yours. It's Christ's. And all that we can do is to conform. So I leave you with one last technical term. I gave it to them last night at the Sunday Vigil, so you have to get it too. That when the Spirit comes into our lives, St. Thomas Aquinas uses a term and the scholastics use a term. That the Spirit enters in, in this idea of strengthening, of illumination, of advocacy, that the Spirit of Truth enters into our life to bring us the wisdom of Christ, to bring us the priest of peace of Christ, to bring us the mind of Christ, and to transform us into that mind. Because when we make this dichotomy, which always sounds dramatic, that you're either in the state of grace or you're the state of sin, every human being, and it is dramatic. This is the drama leading up to the day of judgment. That what St. Thomas says is that the question that becomes then is that what God is doing with grace, this grace is meant to transform the individual, and here's the technical thing, to make them operationally conformed to God. Operationally conformed to God. Meaning that by being human, that this individual truly becomes human in their operation, in their thinking, in the, the loves that they have. But it's an operation not of just being human, but of operating of someone in its operation that is conformed to God himself, so that Christ is sent into this world his death and resurrection, his giving of the Spirit, that motion of Christ in the giving of the Spirit is to transform us, to make us the children of God. Christians have never been the world. Christians have never been in the world. And every Christian who's chosen to enter into the world, they die because it's the world and it's the opposition to Christ. There is Christ and there is Antichrist. So again, Read this first chapter, first two chapters of the letter of the Corinthians, but especially in the context this week, read the letters of St. John and see what that loving apostle has to say about this world of sin and of destruction and what he has to say of the prince of this world. And thanks be to God that we have the possibility to receive this peace of Christ, to receive this grace of God, to be operationally transformed, to conform to God himself, and ultimately what we call simply to be able to receive and to put on the mind of Christ. God is very, very good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen.
We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God for God. kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day, especially Mary, the blessed mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the chosen one, our holy father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude and blessed Jacob of, Had of Hadad. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and brothers and our bro mothers and brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering.
We continue with the anaphora of St. Mark, the Evangelist, on page 835. 835. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God, Almighty Father, you are true and holy love. May we be bound by your divine love and find joy in it all the days of our lives. Make us worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss, that through Jesus Christ our Lord we may be your radiant and blameless flock. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Peace to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. that you grant us in your mercy the riches of your grace and kindness. May your compassion and assistance sustain us all the days of our lives through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Father, you sent your only Son to save us, for we are weak and poor. When we had gone astray, he brought us back to your spiritual fold by his royal blood. Through your grace and the favor of your only Son, we implore you to accept this bloodless sacrifice from our sinful hands, and through it to forgive our sins. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. For the love of God the Father, in the grace of the only begotten Son, and the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. our minds and our hearts. We live to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship Him with humility. It is Truly glory, thanks, praise, and honor are yours, O God the Father, maker of all creation, with your only begotten Son and your living Holy Spirit. The angels, archangels, and all the heavenly hosts bless and praise you. They cry out and they proclaim. Good evening. 
ליסון, ואביע מאוחד אותם חשד אילי מאבד חייהם. אנסע בלחמה מדר כל אישון טוב, וברך הוא קודש. וקסו יבן תלמידו כל אומר, סבחו למהנה כל חול. חולנו דניתא, פחרו הודיל. דחלו פייקון וחלב סגיים, מתחסר ומתיהם. חוסו יום חומי וחוי דן חיילם עלמים. Anna al-Qasadam zikhro min hamro min mayo Barakhu qadensha Uya bil talmida karamara Sabishta wa mehne kulkhu Hounun denita Dimahun dila diyati ki khadata דחלו פייקון וחלב סגיים תשרו מתיהם חוסו יום חומי וחוי דן חיילם עלמים אמין Whenever you observe these commandments, you proclaim my death and resurrection until I come again. Jesus Christ, you remember your plan of salvation for us, your conception, birth and baptism, your saving passion and life-giving death, your burial, your glorious resurrection and ascension into heaven, your sitting at the right hand of God the Father, and your royal second coming when you will judge all people and reward them according to their deeds. Now we ask you, at that fearful hour, have compassion on us and have mercy on us in your kingdom, your kindness, and forgive our sins in your mercy. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you, implores your Father, saying, sinful children receive your graces we thank you for them and because of them we descend it in tongues of fire may perfect us as well give the abundance of your grace and make us chosen vessels worthy of your service Manin Moriyo, Annin Moriyo, Manin Moriyo, Nite Morrochu Chayu Korisho, Onachen Nalainu Var Korbono Ono. May these holy mysteries be for the forgiveness of sins, the heat, pardon of faults, the honor, opening and strengthening of your holy church and the protection of her children from all sin. 
And may these holy mysteries allow us to stand with confidence before your awesome throne, that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, exalt your holy church established throughout the world. Protect your shepherds of the true faith in peace and security all the days of our, their lives, especially Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishar Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, and all the bishops, pious priests, pure deacons, and all who serve your holy altar. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who call upon your holy name. Bless those who are near and bring back those who are far. Visit the sick and strengthen the weak. Release captives and assist the oppressed. Bring back those who have strayed, that they may live in your fear and reward those who have brought offerings to your holy church. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, our civil leaders and all the children of your holy church, grant them security and peace, and keep domestic and foreign conflicts far from them, so that they may live in tranquility. Protect them by the sign of your living and victorious cross. Rescue the persecuted and the displaced of your flock, and be a refuge for strangers and a companion to travelers. Grant your eternal reward to monks, to those who live solitary lives, and to hermits who live on mountaintops and in the caves of the earth. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, upon this altar and upon your heavenly altar, the holy and ever Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the prophets, apostles, martyrs, confessors, and evangelists, John the Baptist, the forerunner, Stephen the Archdeacon and First Martyr, Saint Joseph, Saint Jude, Saint Jose Maria, and all the saints. May we join their ranks and share in their joyful feast. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord have mercy. Remember, O Lord, the faithful teachers who have gone to their rest in the true faith, especially Peter and Paul, Mark, Clement, Ignatius, Dionysius, Julius, and all those who endured suffering and persecution for the strengthening of your holy church. Remember also those who serve your holy altar and forgive their sins, that they may reach your joyful dwellings. We pray to you, O Lord. Remember, O Lord, all those who have left this world and have gone to you. Lead them to your joyful dwellings and blot out all their sins. Through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ, who is without sin, we hope to find mercy and forgiveness for our sins and for theirs. Pardon, O God, and forgive us and the departed, so that your blessed name may be glorified in us and in all things. With the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever.
toward him, you are the pleasing oblation who offered yourself for us. You are the forgiving sacrifice who offered yourself to your Father. You are the high priest who offered yourself as the Lamb. Through your mercy, may our prayer rise like incense, which we offer to your Father through you, to you, you who are in your heart. O oh God the Father, you are merciful and compassionate. You have sanctified this divine service and have perfected it in your good pleasure. By the grace of your only Son and by the descent of your Holy Spirit, sanctify us now that we may be renewed as your spiritual children so that with pure hearts and enlightened souls we may call upon you, O glorious Father and lover of all people, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory of God. Deliver us, O Lord, from every temptation of soul and body, and crush our enemy, the evil one. Grant us your mercy through Christ Jesus, our Lord, for you are blessed and glorified with him and with your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el O Lord, look upon us, your inheritance, who bow before you, and guide our steps on your right path. Make us worthy to share in this sacrifice, and may it sanctify the souls and bodies of those who receive it through Christ Jesus our Lord. We glorify and honor you, your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Amen. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity and sanctity. One Holy Father, one Holy Son, one Holy Spirit, blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and on earth. To him be the glory Make us worthy, O Lord God, so that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy body, and our souls be purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory.
Again and again we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
O God the Father, how can we who are unworthy thank you for your grace, for you have given us this divine gift and have made us worthy to share in the body and blood of your only begotten Son who saved us. Through him and with him, glory and honor are due to you and to your Holy Spirit now and forever. Shlomo el Jesus Christ, our Lord and God, you are worshipped and you are holy. Bless and forgive the priests who are the stewards of your people and of your holy church. Forgive the servers of your divine mysteries and all the faithful who have shared in this sacrifice. Care for orphans, help widows, assist the poor and the distressed, satisfy the hungry, and protect all who call upon your holy name in every place. May your name be glorified with that of your Father and your Holy Spirit, who is good, life-giving, and consubstantial with you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishment and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen.